Uh, this is the ninth in our series of messages uh, after God's heart. And I'm titling this one, How to Ruin Your Life. Uh, in this chapter, 2 Samuel 11, David takes us through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to ruin your life. So let's just pause for a moment, have a little fun, turn to somebody next to you and say, if you were going to ruin your life, what would you do? Or if you're a child, if you have children, child was going to ruin his or her life, what would they do? Just talk for a couple minutes. All right, so David has been anointed to be the next king of Israel. He kills the giant Goliath and frees the illustrious. Uh, Ill Israelites from the Philistines. Uh, he's a commander in the uh, Israeli army and is very successful. Uh, Saul is jealous of him, doesn't want him to be the next king, and, and so he tries to kill him. So David flees out into the desert. Uh, he has a couple opportunities to kill Saul, but he doesn't. Leaves vengeance with God. Has an opportunity to kill Nabal, who was uh, very crass with him, but he doesn't. Um, now, uh, uh, Saul dies in the battle at Jezreel. And uh, all Israel mourns for Saul. And then David becomes the next king of Israel. For 17 years now, he's been the king. And under his administration, they have defeated armies all around them. Uh, they've uh, expanded their borders. They've strengthened their borders. Uh, the country has become very prosperous uh, with crops and cattle and sheep and uh, it's, it's just doing very well. Uh, they've just gotten back from a battle where they killed 40,000 Syrians, uh, one of their last enemies, and about the only enemy left to deal with are the Ammonites. But David decides not to go. To Joab, the head of the commander, you, you can handle this by yourself. So in the spring, uh, this is uh, 2 Samuel 11, at the time when kings go off to war, Jab jo David sent Joab with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. Most kings go this time of year. David thought, yeah, you can handle it. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. So David had a little extra time on his hands. He's about 47 at the time. Um, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Now David gets all kinds of warnings from this servant. The servant says, David, she's married. Not only that, she's married to Uriah. But David doesn't heed the warnings. He pushes ahead. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back to home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. So this little secret one night stand is getting a lot more complicated. So David sent this word to Joab. Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. David, this is just phony talk. He doesn't care at all about Uriah or Joab. He just wants Uriah to go down and sleep with his wife and assume the child's his. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace and a gift was sent from the king after him, something to make the evening more romantic. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house. David couldn't get him to go. He was too honorable a man uh, so, uh, so that doesn't work. The next night he gets him drunk. He thinks that'll do it. And then, then Uriah will go down to sleep with Bathsheba. That doesn't work either. At that point, David should have, you know, said, Hey, I got something to tell you. I slept with your wife and they could have talked about it, decided what to do. Instead, he goes to plan B. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, put Uriah out in the front lines where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. You can't make up this stuff. This is unbelievable. Now to hide his 
sin, he's going to put this guy uh, to death. Uh, it goes on and on like this. Uh, oh, I don't need to read anymore. So step after step, he's ruining his life. And if we follow those kind of steps, we can ruin our lives as well. All right, I hope you have a great study. Talk together, go through the journal together, pray together, pray for each other. Have a great time. Thank you.